In your packet, there are the draft minutes from the October 8th meeting. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? If not, they will stand as distributed. Um, we'll now move to the public comments period. Uh, there's a limit of five minutes, and I will be the timekeeper. So if you're within uh, one minute of, your, of the end, I will put up one finger um, to indicate that. Joe? Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Mr. Chair and members of the team, the chair just mentioned that there are a couple of opportunities tonight to speak regarding the town center regulating plan and other items on tonight's agenda, as well as any that might not be. Typically, this first public comment session is for items in general speaking but we also tonight have an opportunity for any property owner within town center area to come forward and speak regarding the regulating plan the land use map etc so just to advise the chair the moderator facilitator and all of you as volunteers i'm going to go ahead and just read the cards but I want the opportunity to allow anyone that wants to speak during that particular portion of the agenda about the regulating plan to feel comfortable coming back up because that's really part of what we're here for tonight. So thank you. First speaker is Jim Bowling. Thank you. Uh, team members, uh, Jim Bolin, 2165 Timberline Valley Drive, Ward 6. I uh, understand this evening your, app, uh, your, your agenda includes a discussion of Ackerley Place, and I just wanted to mention a few uh, comments about that. As you may know, there are three zoning classifications applicable to this property, uh, Workplace, Neighborhood Edge, and Neighborhood General. Uh, workplace is in a, is, doesn't really apply with respect to what I'm going to speak to which is the minimum lot sizes. In the case of Neighborhood Edge and Neighborhood General, I'm not sure whether uh, you're aware, but those classifications require only a minimum of 20 foot widths. And I don't think I need to measure that off for you. That's, that's pretty small. So without regard to the proposed development, that's another issue, with respect to those two zoning classifications in Town Center specifically, I would ask that you at the, the right time, whether it's tonight or later when you consider the design standards, to increase that to 60 to 70 foot widths. And I have the following reasons for it. Uh, number one, it is a better transition uh, with respect to town center, our non-urban areas and so, so forth. Number two, no one has ever requested to develop these in these classifications um, the land uh, at, at 20 foot. So if, if, if that's not realistic, that's not what we're doing. Let's look at what is realistic. And number three, land doesn't depreciate. I've mentioned that before. The last thing I want to mention is that I have cleared uh, that recommendation with both our director of planning and city attorney, and they are in support. 
you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much, and thank you for all you do. Appreciate it. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Sontragraw, and I live at uh, 16919 Near Acres. Uh, it took me five minutes to walk over here this evening, so quite close. Uh, um, where I live, uh, I have three, uh, three point eight acres, and my home is on the very north side of the, those acres, uh, which puts my back door about fifty feet from a lot that is on Crestview. So my concern is, uh, and it seems apparent to me that the city, at some point, if development happens on Crestview of any kind, that they would be bringing Main Street through Crestwood going west. Well, that puts me even closer to a very busy street and possible development that may change as that street is opened up or the rules change because I have seen them change over time and it makes sense that they should change. You should change the better, better the city, better the community. I don't see any change that's going to better me in that regard uh, unless I can sell my property when uh, Crestview becomes Main Street. So, uh, that's that's my concern as a homeowner. What should I do? I'm looking to this this forum to tell me what I should do. My thought is, since I live on Near Acres and there are seven families in that Near Acres uh, community, that we should get together and agree agree as a group to sell our I think it's 43 some odd acres. And therefore, we wouldn't be picked off one by one by developer or by something else that may happen through a movement from the city. So I'm very concerned. Yeah, the city bought uh, the city bought these two lots and cleared. Both of them to remove the homes. Yes, my n northeast corner touches the lot, the furthest lot that direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm behind the guys got the horses and the goats, which I enjoy those. I'm not complaining. That they're great. Any other questions? It's it's residential. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, and, the, and what you just spoke to is my concern. It, it's zone residential today, but I know when push comes to shove and economics and and so forth, the, those lots on Crestview are a little bit different zone than mine. That's my concern, and I'm 50 feet from them. <coughs> Ms. Hood, the area around near Acres is designated neighborhood edge under the regulating plan. And Mike's point is, is that his northern boundary of his property abuts a downtown district designation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary K. Corsair. I live at 17617 Melrose Road, Wildwood, Missouri. I think the easiest thing for what we would like to explain about our piece of property, which is an 11-acre track that is directly behind the city hall, is if I read a letter that we've um, comprised here. 
It's addressed to Mr. Joe Vunich, Mrs. Kathy Arnett, and the Town Center Update Team. Ladies and gentlemen, regarding 16815 Manchester Road, 11.2 acres, we are requesting that our entire track of land be considered neighborhood general and not split between workplace and neighborhood edge. Under the designation neighborhood general, there would be many more possibilities for development of this site. Neighborhood Edge, by contrast, offers limited development possibilities. Although Neighborhood Edge allows for single-family detached homes, this use is not practical when taking into account what borders the property. To the west, a tavern. To the north, Wildwood City Hall. To the east, a church. To the south, proposed commercial. Not an environment in which people would want to build their single-family home. You will also note Neighborhood Edge allows for sewage treatment facilities. We are certain this usage is not something you would want in the heart of the Wildwood Town Center. Again, Neighborhood Edge allows for churches and civ civil buildings, civic buildings should be, as in government. However, we already have these uses within this area. It is not feasible to run utilities on a portion of this site to allow for commercial development along Manchester Road. Thus, with a split usage on this site, this creates a hardship for the property owner to sell their property. From a practical standpoint of development, we are requesting our entire site be considered neighborhood general. Do you have any questions of me? Team. Yes, go ahead. You mentioned that uh, utilities aren't feasible on parts of Manchester Road. Could you I mean, clarify that? Just the that? idea of running part of it to be able to use part of the property to the front or even in reverse, part of the property to the back and not the front. When the site develops, all utilities have to be run within it to be financially practical. Thank you. Any other questions from the team? Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Jones, next speaker is Mary Ann Henze. Hello, I'm Mary Ann Hines, Ward 3, that's all right. Um, I am the person who conducted the survey uh, concerning uh, what is being proposed here. Um, I did not really attempt to influence it as much as simply to gather information from as many sources as possible, or as many residents as possible, uh, about whether they're in favor or against converting from three acres to smaller zoning. As you can see, the results that I have show an overwhelming number of people um, that, uh, I should say, overwhelming number of um, residents uh, that, uh, uh, that are opposed. Uh, let me give you a little background about this. Uh, I've conducted it on a uh, program called Next Door. It has certain limitations in that um, each person is assigned a, uh, a range, a uh, radius, uh, from their house uh, what, of uh, who they can contact. You can see my numbers are a little short in the areas of uh, wards 5 and 6. That's the reason. Much of that is outside of my range. Uh, but being in ward 3, I'm pretty central, and most of the, uh, most of the area had, has been covered. What kind of inspired this was that was watching the tape from last week. Uh, a statement was made that very few people were opposed to, to this uh, conversion to uh, town center. Um, there was already a, a site, uh, a, uh, a discussion site that proved differently, but I figured numbers were better. Um, so unilaterally, I decided to run this survey. Uh, it represents, uh, it represents um, 
<coughs> excuse me, households, not individuals, because uh, of the way uh, Nextdoor works, it is per household. Um, I, I combed through every name carefully to make sure that, for example, husband and wife both voted. I only counted once. Um, but I know this is an informal survey, um, but uh, that is a rather significant number to totally ignore. I know that it is also, um, you know, I'm not suggesting in any way that it, it should be the sole consideration, but I just uh, request that it be one of the uh, pieces of information that you use in decision making. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the team? Yes, Je Jeannie? Yeah, you can keep that. You can keep that. And just for the purposes of clarification, item one, the 75 acres. That's both. Uh, the, the combination, isn't there some approximately, um, I, I try to keep it survey simple. I think it was like 35 acres on one side on Woods Road, and there's also <coughs> another 45 or so in Ward 1, close to Pond Road. <coughs> what is it? Uh, the item one and item two, what the, what the questions were. As of last week, you had two separate issues. You, you had um, uh, rezoning from three acres to one and a half acres. During the course of last week's meeting, um, it was determined, uh, listening to the tape, determined that no, no developer had expressed any interest in building on one and a half acre sites. So you combined it. That's what uh, you know, at least when I was watching it. But when I issued the, uh, when I first started the survey, they were two separate subjects, two locations: the the um, uh, the Woods Road and also the one in, in uh, uh, Ward One. To combine the generality, in other words, that what is being considered for going into town center is uh, you know two areas and wanting to know how people reacted to that. The 26 yes votes, I should say, also. Uh, for for converting to uh, one and a half acres, you can see you got 26 people. But when it got to saying now take those same acres and transfer them to town center, only eight of the 26 people, same 26 people, were in favor. Again, if you, uh, yeah, I know this is an informal survey. Uh, I, I I did it again because of the statement that very few people were opposed. I thought you should at least have the input. Any other questions from the team? Yes. Correct. Um, what the total universe? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't trying to um, uh, get that particular again for an informal survey. Um, on there had to be people who were on this program uh, on uh, next door. It's not the whole of Wildwood. It's only people who have signed up to that particular program. So, no. Do we know how many households are in this area, roughly? Um, I, can, I can probably look into that and give you a, a, a send, send some information on that. I'm just curious. If a lot of people who are on the programs look at it like once a month or so too you know it's, it's it's that kind of a thing but just wanting to get an understanding that without without it being obviously it's informal non-binding on you but just a, a general understanding that yeah there's a a significant number of households and um as far as how many that would translate in, into people and voters um my guess is two per per house not because of couples but of course there'd be single people there'd be couples and there's an awful lot of people nowadays whose adult children are still living with them. Even after they get married, they're, they're still living with mom and dad, having the first child at home. So you have, <laughs> yeah, you, you have uh, a larger number of voters per house. I think two is probably conservative. Just to get a rough idea that um, it's not just the usual suspects. I should put it that way. Uh, I know there's a lot of division in city, on city council. And too many issues are being decided based on it. Uh, too many issues are, are being based on who spoke. It must be them, you know, and, and then when the other guys speak, it's, it must be them. No, this seems to be, the composition is mostly, wouldn't be who you thought. Um, maybe they're not on next, next door. Uh, 
most of the people are uh, fresh voices that you have not heard from before. So I think that's kind of significant too. You already know where, where the frequent commenters are on all those subjects. But this is, a, again, it's a, a, a fairly good number of people, mostly new voices, and um, just want to give it to you for information. Vince? Just for the purposes, perhaps, of clarification, first of all, thank you very much for bringing this information to us. We, we glean information from the members members of the community that participate at every meeting that we have and it's important to us obviously we didn't have this information last meeting right, when right. we were discussing these issues right. a little bit about our process at the conclusion of this committee's work which will be sometime in the next who knows three to six to eight months who knows what it is we will develop a document and forward it to first planning and zoning right. and then the city council Correct. for ultimate revision approval uh, whatever they decide to do. So I want to assure you that, and members that participated and felt strongly in your survey, that you will have another opportunity. I don't anticipate that this body will address once again those issues because we feel pretty comfortable that we had a very thorough examination and made a recommendation. Not everyone agreed with it, but that's how the process is made. Right. But just to assure you, we're not the final word. There will be opportunity for in additional input and revision to the plan as, as we presented it. So uh, I would encourage you and the folks that feel strongly one way or the other to continue to be involved in that process. It will have a great deal to do with how the ultimate product ends up. So thank you very much. Okay, and uh, yeah, I went, I'm aware of that. Okay. That um, <clears throat> your package will go to P&Z and eventually to, right. to Council. I just thought it would be good to know what the, you know, that kind of an input. I don't think you had it before. Thank you. Okay. Elizabeth? Mary, you know, I have an affirmative that we would have a copy of this. Yes, I told Joe that, yeah. Okay. yeah. You can keep that and make copies from there. Thank you. Yes, that. Ray okay. again? Just one more question. Sure. Um, I understand that this is an informal survey, and I, I congratulate you for doing this and bringing this to our attention. I think your point is well taken that all too often it's the loudest voice that gets heard and maybe not the preponderance of voices. And so it begs the question for me, um, do we have any data like this where we have conducted any sort of survey? Uh, and, on, and we could certainly you know, poke holes. You're right. Sure. Again, this is an informal okay. survey. You, you've surveyed households. We don't really know if the household is split and so on. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I commend you on this. I'm not criticizing I know. it. Yeah, I know. Um, do we have anything like this where we, we can gauge the feeling of the residents in this regard? I will defer to Mr. Ginton, Department of Planning. As part of the master plan update that was concluded in 2016, there was a citywide survey conducted over the internet via the city's website. We got a very good response. Uh, Dr. Jones and an associate of his actually prepared the survey, conducted the, the count, so to speak, and then provided the analysis. It's in the master plan as an appendix if you'd like to review it. Uh, you can certainly use better programs to run a survey. There, um, even online, I've been told there are uh, survey programs per se. Uh, I mean, I haven't looked at them. I'm not a survey person, so I, I, I don't know if they're, uh, what, like, how they work. But um, yeah, this is just meant to at least kind of, you know, make you aware that, uh, that it is not just a small number, and it's not just the, quote, usual su suspects, so to speak. It is people who uh, usually you don't hear from when you see a lot of other, when you see a lot of other uh, on online traffic. Do any other team members have a question? You already know the reasons why people are opposed. I mean, it, it, it goes back to when the city was founded, um, you know, the, the uh, three acre minimums, the trying to avoid close uh, residential housing. All of, the, all of those are the reasons that were given. If you go to nextdoor.com and you find my survey or another uh, discussion uh, on the subject, you'll see a long list of comments. And you can read them and, and see what people are thinking. 
Any other questions from the team? Thank you very, very much. Okay. Oh, I'm Deborah Dunn. Yeah, I, I don't really have a question, but thank you very much for um, coming up with the survey. And I have to say that my constituents and constituents across the city um, want increased lot sizes. They were heard in a long time ago that there weren't going to be any more lot sizes less than <clears throat> one acre per mm -hmm. household. And um, keep hearing that loud and clear. So thank you for coming forward with this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. McCutcheon, with all due respect, the town center has been part of the master plan since 1996, and that always anticipated smaller lot sizes than one acre. I understand that. I'm just passing along resident comments. One last thing. I just received a card. If you could speak into your microphone so people could hear the conversation, they certainly would appreciate it. Thank you. Mike Doster. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Cheryl Loyal, uh, Dr. Jones, members of uh, TCUT. Uh, I'm Mike Doster, 16090 Swingley Ridge Road in Chesterville, Missouri. I am the land use counsel to Payne Family Homes on the reserve uh, project. And uh, with me tonight is Mr. Tom Cummings, who is a consultant to Payne Family Homes on this project. And later on, I know you're going to be discussing uh, the reserve plan. Uh, Mr. Cummings is well suited to talk about the genesis and evolution of that plan and its characteristics. I just wanted to make a, a few opening comments. As I think many of you know, the application has been pending before the city since September of uh, 2015. Uh, it's been a long uh, process. Um, the original plan, called the Ackerley Plan, uh, was not well received, even though staff recommended approval of that plan because it technically complied with the regulating plan uh, and the guidelines for town center. Uh, so realizing it was not well received and probably couldn't get approval, we went back to the drawing board and frankly did a lot of drawings over time as a result of many meetings we had with staff, with the Planning Commission, and others in the community. So the reserve plan that's before you tonight is the culmination of all that activity. And while we heard negative comments about the Ackerley plan, we have heard positive comments about the reserve plan. Uh, it does uh, comply with the regulating plan. Uh, staff recommended it be denied because I believe, and Joe may correct me on this, uh, that uh, it did not substantially comply with the guidelines in, in the view of staff. Uh, nevertheless, we've heard comments from many people ranging from this is a far better plan to this is uh, what we should be doing. And I would hope uh, that you uh, would see this plan as, as a good plan for the location. And uh, above all, um, we didn't expect to be in front of you this long. Uh, we originally thought uh, we'd be here 60 to 90 days. And of course, it's about double that. We understand that. Uh, the issues and concerns you all have addressed are very important to the community. Uh, and the discussion of the reserve plan is very important to the community and to the petitioner Payne Family Homes. It's our earnest hope that tonight you would send the reserve plan back to the Planning Commission, uh, hopefully with some kind of, of blessing so that we can move forward in the process. Thank you for letting me speak, and I understand that we'll have an opportunity to participate later on during the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions at this point for, Ed, for the, the team? Tom Cummings. The last speaker card I have at this time is Joe Garitano. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, thank you all for your service to, to be on this committee for the weeks and months that you've put into this. Your service is greatly appreciated, so uh, I want to thank you for that. Um, for the record, my name is Joe Garitano, 16312 Cherry Orchard Drive. Um, I'm here, and we've heard from several folks as well uh, regarding 
larger lot sizes. I think it's something that we hear repetitively over and over again that we'd like to see us trend towards larger lot sizes. I've heard that in my years of service here for the city. I'm going to show a map that is going to be very familiar to all of you here. That, yep, and I think actually you had it up. Okay. So this map here represents the town center area. Wildwood is roughly 66 square miles. In the town center area, when you figure out the percentage of land, it represents about 1.8% of all of Wildwood. 1.8%. That means about 98% of Wildwood is outside of the town center. I think it's important to remember and keep that in mind because we forget that. Yeah, my perspective is probably a little bit more from the inside out. I am a property owner and reside here in Ward 8. And I was here a few years ago, about six years ago, because there was a development that was being proposed right next to our subdivision. And this subdivision right here, I had to go back in the archives to find this presentation. But this uh, yellow box represents my subdivision. We are not town center. We're right on the edge of town center when you look at it. And you can see our subdivision has about 162 homes. This is a little dated, this presentation, so we're over 20 years old. Homes average about 2,700 square feet. Lot sizes are just a little under of a quarter of an acre. About six years ago, we had a proposal for the area that you see in red. Uh, it's a development that's been completed today. But we were here, myself and my neighbors, for a couple of reasons. The number one reason we were here was around density. See, what you see here is our neighborhood on the bottom side along the street, about 10 homes. What was being proposed at the time was backing up to 19 homes. Two homes for every home that we had. And when the word got out in the neighborhood, boy, did they get upset about it. So this proposal initially came to the city here, planning and zoning. And let me give you a little bit of a perspective. This is about an 11 acre parcel of land. And they initially proposed 62 homes on 11 acres of land. When we got to planning and zoning, they brought it down. You can see right there, nine acres, 57 lots. Now, in my neighborhood, we have 162. We're a lot larger. So when you look at the numbers in the math here, the existing Cherry Hills neighborhood has lot sizes of about almost, again, like a little under a quarter of an acre, 8,600 square feet. What was initially being proposed was about half of that at 4,700 square feet. So you could see quite a difference. One now, minute, sir. Oh, one minute. Okay. I know I have to keep to the time here. So tonight, I know we're talking about the proposed neighborhood edge. And what we came and talked about was transition. So the proposed neighborhood edge is about one and a half acres per home. Huge difference, as you could see there. And if you compare it to some of the other neighborhoods in the town center, a lot larger. I mean, you're looking at 0.07 being the smallest, which is Canberry and so forth. So we came here because we wanted a good transition. Now, whether it's in the town center or out of the town center, I'll leave that up to you. But speaking from someone who was on the edge of the property, that's what we wanted. We wanted something that we could transition. And guess what? The city has an ordinance, Ordinance 415, that was passed in 1998. That talks exactly about this, transitions around the existing neighborhoods. So the law is on your side. So I'm out of time. But anyway, we had all these people come here, sign petitions back then asking for less density and transition. Thank you. Are there any questions for the gentleman? I just want to confirm, you're supporting... 
you're supporting the recommendation that we did last time around is that right from what I've read the recommendation is advocating for a transition yes and so therefore being on the edge of a town center where I was I would say that's probably a good proposal there needs to be a good transition now again I'm that's what you have on the table right now is where it is and you've selected two properties out of four and they're adjacent right now to town center so at this point right now it sounds like it is something worth considering given the transition needs that we had again as I mentioned we had hundreds of people sign petitions that on these petitions right here back then in 2013 said number one we wanted less density and we were on the outside of town center other questions from the team thank you sir thank you so that concludes the public comments dr. Jones those are the only speaker cards that were provided to the department again we'll have another opportunity at the conclusion of the meeting thank you we'll now move to agenda item four: distribution and explanation of meeting materials by the Department of Planning and Parks thank you dr. Jones mr. chair and members of the team as as been done in past meetings the department has prepared for you a packet of information in association with the discussions that are to to occur tonight amongst that information is a version of the information relating to the reserve at Wildwood or as originally named Eckerly place as was noted in the email that was sent regarding tonight's agenda, there is a larger document, I think 150 pages or so, and Terry and I asked if you wanted the entirety of that to bring the one you were provided, or certainly we can provide one to you after tonight's meeting again. Along with that information, there is additional items relating to the regulating plan discussion and the list of uses permitted within town center under the regulating plans land use categories and finally two items that are standard practice we have provided to you the timeline and the chart that represents the actions that have been formally taken by the team relative to the issues presented to it over the past approximate one year also not to forget the revised version of the neighborhood transition district is also included with the changes requested by the team and inclusive now in that document for your review if there are any questions about the items provided tonight the department be glad to try to answer them at this time thank you any questions for any team member hearing none what item would you like to bring up first then thank you again dr. Jones mr. chair and members of the team as was noted in public participation there has been a proposal before the town center update team um, for approximately the time frame that there has been this process in place back in March of 2019 the Planning and Zoning Commission referred this particular development proposal to the team for review and recommendation as was noted the original proposal began in 2015 now almost five years ago and ultimately has evolved into this particular design that is represented in the colorized version of the preliminary development plan and more precisely and detailed on the accompanying sheets that are part of the packet for tonight's meeting the speaker mr. Doster noted that there has been a great deal of discussion at the Planning and Zoning Commission regarding this particular proposal the Department of Planning and several of the Planning and Zoning Commission members did not support this proposal 
not because the regulating plan was in air, meaning there was a requirement for workplace or commercial uses along a portion of the site's Route 109 frontage, and the remainder could be single-family detached homes in individual lots. So from the perspective of the regulating plan, the design complied commercial and single-family detached on individual lots. However, as the team is aware, the regulating plan is one of five different major elements of the town center plan. And in reviewing the other major elements, three of the remaining four were identified as problematic relative to this current design those related to the street network map, the neighborhood design standards, and to a certain degree, the architectural guidelines. All of that information, those components, are described in the packet of information provided to you tonight. However, as was mentioned again by Mr. Doster and several of the Planning and Zoning Commission members at that March 2019 meeting, the proposal does have certain merits. And those merits relate to larger lot sizes, increased lot widths, integration of public space in a more appropriate manner, and several others. Given the team was to be formed or had been formed and was initially meeting, the thought was is that a review by its members and a recommendation would be appropriate. So tonight, the department has presented this information to you previously. You can go through the report if you like. But tonight, I believe Mr. Doster and others are requesting a decision or a direction relative to this particular proposal so as it can return to the Planning and Zoning Commission and follow a normal course to its conclusion. It is important to note that since the process started back in March of 2019, Access to this site from State Route 109 is being improved at this time with the new roundabout, lane widenings on Route 109, the installation of pedestrian improvements, etc. That uh, is a change and certainly was a question during the initial stages of Ackerley Place and the reserve, the Route 109 frontage and improvements. But as you can see, it is. 133 lots on the 50 plus acre tract of land. It has a very prominent location on Route 109 as well as Manchester Road. And during our tour of properties, this was called out as one of the locations for future discussion. And with that, Mr. Chair and Dr. Jones, if there are specific questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them at this time. And again, Mr. Doster and Mr. Cummings are here to present um, what I would believe is their request as well as the rationales for the request that's before you tonight. Thank you. Just to clarify, Joe, uh, the desire, at least from the department, uh, is to have the team either approve or disapprove the plan this evening? Uh, obviously, that's the... That would be the ultimate goal, but I would also assume that there may be just suggestions for consideration by the Planning and Zoning Commission and maybe not an outright yes or no. Mm -hmm. Again, you heard that density is a concern amongst many of our residents. The mayor referenced it relative to his discussion on lot width. So it, there, may, there are a number of options, Dr. Jones, but I think at the end of the discussion, some direction or some action would be preferred so the matter could return to Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you. Vince? Uh, Joe, just, just for my own edification, the track of land, 50 give or take acres, is classified, use classification currently of workplace 
along Highway 109, and then Neighborhood Edge and Neighborhood General, there's a mix of those two. That's correct, sir. And as the current proposal sits without any modification, it meets all those land classification utilized in the master plan, correct? That's correct. In the department's report, it noted the regulating plan component was compliant. It was from that point forward that the department took issue with certain aspects of it. Architecturally, it's compliant. Not knowing the exact type of dwelling unit that would be proposed here, but if they followed suit with what they, what Payne Family Homes has completed in Main Street Crossing, those have been through Architectural Review Board review by the city and accepted and approved. And if it was something like that, identical to that, or close to it, that would probably be acceptable. So for this body to, to recommend a change, we would either have to change the land use categories and some component of that, or I'm trying to, because because as it sits now, they comply with what is permissible within town center. Relative to the regulating plan, right, the right. land use, the, the grosser, the, the overall land use component. Right. And I'm just trying to get a feel for right. operationally what we would need to do. Either take it out of town center or recommend that it be taken out of town center, that sort of thing. Or recommend a change to their land use classification. I'm just trying to get a handle on if there was a desire to change anything, the mechanism for that would be to in that manner. Mr. Chair, I would make the assumption that the Planning and Zoning Commission would appreciate any and all comments, whether it's to remove the 50 acres out of town center, to change the classification all to neighborhood edge, or if there is an intent on the part of the team to say, we believe that a minimum lot size should be such and such, and a minimum lot area should be such and such. I think at this stage, the team could offer its opinion, which would be in the form of its recommendation, and then the Planning and Zoning Commission, and then eventually City Council would have to make the decisions. Elizabeth and then Jean. The mic. Thank you. Okay. I've been looking at these plans several times um, <clears throat> working on this committee with uh, my partnership with all of you. And I've always had a question um, about the exit and entrance to this development. And if you have 133 homes, you've got 266 cars as a minimum. And it's my understanding that the entrance and exit is onto Highway 109. Is that correct? There is an access point onto Route 109 as well as Manchester Road. And where is that located over here at the bottom? It is in very close proximity to the bus entrance exit at Pond School. At Pond School. Okay, it's not, it's not, is it on this? I don't see it. It's on the plan, but there are so many lines in association with the plan sheets, it's a little difficult to see. But there is an access point on the Manchester Road. I know there's, um, there's been a traffic study over a number of months for the entire um, Wildwood particularly 109 and, and Manchester Road, how does these entrance and exits comply with that study? Can you give me some guidance on that? Uh, certainly. Um, from the standpoint of State Route 109, H.R. Green, which completed the traffic analysis for Town Center, advocated for this particular type of situation the inclusion now of two new roundabouts, medians at certain turning locations to direct traffic into the roundabouts. So this is the optimum situation for this particular site. 
on Route 109. The long-range plan for Manchester Road did in indicate an access point from this 50-acre tract of land <coughs> to that roadway, but there would also be a roundabout there to accommodate increased volume of traffic. And where would that be? Again, in that lower corner. Okay, that's a, that's a much better picture for me to understand where that I thought exit it might be and entrance a, is. Yeah, it calls out the roads a little clearer yes. by the contrasting color. I have a second question. Yes, um, there is um, a document that you have about extending Generations Drive, which is to the south of that, and I know it's not as close to Pond School because there's an awful lot of traffic coming off of um, Generations Drive and onto College Avenue, New College Avenue. So what, I, that, I don't know if that was included in the study, that extension of that road um, and how that would impact the number of cars um, out of this development with, if that was included eventually, with the college exit and entrance there um, because there's a lot of traffic right now on New College Avenue when classes let out. You've got some commercial buildings to the north. You've got YMCA to the south. And I know that's a congested area during certain times of the day. H.R. Green, the consultant that completed the traffic analysis, was advised of that proposal to extend Generations Drive from its current terminus north along Wildwood Square to Manchester Road. If there is any additional building at the community college campus, they are also required under agreement with the community college to construct a road to Manchester Road through their property proper. And that road that had been proposed years ago so then it would, would we have a stop sign there? Would we have? Again, a roundabout is anticipated, although okay. not shown on this particular plan. Okay. But in the interim, if a roundabout isn't constructed, we would obviously study if a, a stop signs, some type of traffic control would be appropriate. And my memory tells me that... Um, that that particular road being extended, and you tell me if I'm correct, five years out? Well, it was always to be triggered on the second building on the community college's campus. I think that five-year time frame is probably a pretty good one now. I've been told that they're busting at the seams in their current building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. I just wanted to, the mayor had also brought up in his statement that Ackerley Place was showing 20 foot width for their lots. What's the width of each lot that they're proposing? This hood, if I had better eyes, I could tell you. But <laughs> if I had better eyes, I could tell you. <laughs> uh, I even have contacts on to help. but. Uh, the different colored lots represent different widths, and maybe Mr. Cummings could chime in because I know he prepared this exhibit specifically to answer that question. Why don't you approach the microphone, Mr. Cummings, so everybody can hear you clearly. Tom Cummings, uh, 1401 Brentwood Boulevard, Suite two, or 625. Um, in answer to your question, it's been a long time since I looked at, at the at the exact uh, lot widths and how many of each one are represented. But our original accurately plan did not include 20-foot lots. I think what the mayor was saying was that that was permissible under the underlying land use designation. Right. Um, w what we had proposed were the um, neo-traditional alley-loaded lots that you see at Main Street Crossing. That Those were, I think, 30, Joe, 40, thank you. 40 foot lots those those were our smallest lots in the in the prior iteration um, these lots here average well well over 10,000 square feet um, which compares I think very favorably to what mr. Gar Garitano presented earlier um, in other parts of the city 
Um, and I, I know right now they go up to 90 feet wide. At the, and, that's, and that's measured at the building line. Vince and then Ray. Mike. Michael. Michael Lee is one of our two representatives from the Planning and Zoning Commission that we're fortunate to have on the team. So I hate to put you on the spot a little bit, but I will. The, um, <laughs> prior to this being forwarded to this committee for consideration, it was before the Planning and Zoning Commission, and they did not take action, but they were prepared to take action. Is that correct? I guess to explain how we ended up here, could you go back to the regulating drawing? And the body of my question is, yeah, how are you going to, how did you come to your conclusion before it came here? Okay, so the circled area that you see, we have workplace in red, neighborhood general in uh, the brown, and the neighborhood edge in the, I guess it's a yellow color. The issue that we have when we see something come in that's a departure from straight zoning is how to deal with it, all right? Workplace is commercial. Therefore, that's where that commercial element came in on the plans that were submitted. Um, it's a plan development, so we're allowed to make changes, but overall we try to stick with the city's zoning documents, okay? The reason we pushed it here was that you're looking at basically a neighborhood edge development with a commercial out parcel. It doesn't necessarily follow the criteria that you're looking at on the drawing. Neighborhood general allows for multifamily row houses and apartments or single family attached. We don't have any of that in the proposed plan so the the idea here is to make a recommendation for what we want town center to look like all right that's the zoning aspect of it now personally if i back away from what i do on p and z um the question i have is do we want commercial there or do we want residential? How does that work out? Having the workplace designation and having an out parcel there is a criteria from the, the uh, town center guidelines. Does it make any sense? I would say no. I would rather see the trees. I'd rather see the headwaters of the creek stay put and have the homes off of 109 instead of right up to 109. And part of the reason we have the issues in Brightleaf is because of the neighborhood general zoning and working it in with the smaller tracks. What I'm hearing everybody present is they want transition zones. How do we do that? So that's what we need to decide. The plan that is being presented by Payne family will come back to planning and zoning and then it'll have a recommendation go on to council and they'll they'll vote on it. I think what we need to do here is figure out the transitions. When when town center was developed, the idea behind the um, smaller residents was to bring in higher density community walking areas. I don't see a lot of support for that anywhere in the city. We're not Kirkwood, we're not Clayton, we're Wildwood. So um, I think personally, I'd like to get rid of the workplace completely if we come away with that. And I would like to see this all go neighborhood edge. And then if we do any other criteria on it from a transition, then we can make that recommendation. I'd like to keep the tree line. I'd like to keep the headwaters of the creek as it is. Mr. Chair. J Joe. I'm sure that there's some confusion because town center, the town center plan isn't the easiest document to review and read. But as you can see on the permitted land use chart, single family detached is permitted in the neighborhood general and in the neighborhood edge both categories associated with the reserve. 
My apologies to Commissioner Lee. I'm trying to correct you. But again, the issue from the department's perspective wasn't the regulating plan. And certainly you could look at the parcel and say it should be neighborhood ed transition if you choose. But the issues related to street network map, neighborhood design standards, and the architectural guidelines because we didn't have a full, um, we didn't have all the information. Uh, so I want to pick up where Elizabeth was going because I'm not sure that I understood uh, fully. Uh, if we come back to the map that we were looking at when Elizabeth was speaking, that is the ingress and egress map. Perfect, uh, that one. Um, if I l see correctly, there are two points of ingress and egress to this uh, subdivision. And am I correct in observing that one of them goes by um, a park, Old Pond School Park? Is that what's down there? Okay. But so, but there are uh, only two? There are only two. As you can see in the upper right corner, there is a Dove Street that was required as part of the development of the Phillips 66 C store and gas pumps. And it was the intent at one point to extend that step street into this 50 plus acre tract of land. There have been debates on whether it's needed or not and the impact it would have on the environment because it would have to cross Bonham Creek. Okay. And then uh, just another uh, several questions. Uh, originally, the city opposed this development, as I understand, because the street network, uh, the street can configuration and the architectural guidelines uh, and I wasn't sure when I heard you describing this Joe has that been mitigated since since you originally or since the department originally issued its reservations um, no the plan is identical to the version that the department wrote its recommendation report on right but what I thought I heard you saying was it been mitigated because of the work that was going on with 109 and uh, the a portion of it, the access issue, because initially the developer of this particular site, the petitioner, so to speak, was not advocating the construction of any portion of the Route 109 improvements under their cost. Okay. And so we were going kind of back and forth, well, how are you going to access the site, et cetera, et cetera. So the reservations remain as they were, is that... Well, again, remember the street network map includes the interior roads, the internal roads. It includes Manchester Road as well, and to a certain degree, the Stub Street. The design standards relate to how the units are placed on the lots, the setback build two lines, et cetera, et cetera. So there's nothing, it's a combination of multiple factors. I'd like us all to consider, I know it's very important, we've all talked to our blue in the face about density, and we've all talked about this progression west of that destiny. And I would like the group to initiate a discussion and a proposal to convert that entire track to neighborhood edge transition and have it meet the guidelines that were established last meeting. And I'd like it, it gives us a transition into Pond Road. It gives us the opportunity to eliminate uh, the commercial aspect. It gives us the option of a tree line along 109 to offer a break to that subdivision. Uh, we can still manage the watershed and so on and so forth, and we end up with a density that I think we could all live with. So I'd like input on that. Thank you. Vicki? Joe, um, in all this discussion, you, you've mentioned these 
the five points, and you have said that they um, they meet the basic point of this design meets the basic regulation plan, but it does not meet the architectural guidelines. It does not meet the neighborhood design, and it does not meet the street network. Um, I. I I think just for the benefit of all the people that are here, would you mind just explaining where Bonham Creek is? And I, and I, I do have a, another question. The, the terrain of this land, the back of this design as it sits right now, has a large retaining wall. Is that correct? Um, different variations of the plan did indicate a retaining <laughs> wall along a portion of the western boundary. Um, certainly, I believe Payne Family Homes has been trying to negate the extent of that wall, and certainly that could be done through a little bit prior, better topographic information and more engineering thought. But there probably will be some retaining walls associated with the site. Bottom Creek, for the most part, parallels. into a large system of piping under Route 100 into Community Park. Yes, the, uh, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Um, Joe, you can jump in here anytime you want, but on the street network, well, one of the issues that we were struggling with is this is m considered to be basically Main Street, and on the east side of the development, we don't have any residential driveways coming off of the road. It's more of a, a boulevard street. You go cross the roundabout, and all of a sudden, we're into more of a subdivision layout. And that was one of the big stumbling blocks that we had on the, on the street network. Um, the trade-off to that is that you, you have better use of the land. You can be on the ridges and and save the valley save the creek uh, but it is a departure from the underlying um, criteria that we have for town center so that is i think that was our biggest hurdle that we were dealing with you can jump in on that now you've uh, i think summarized it very well it's the proverbial water balloon you squeeze one side and something pops out and so if you <laughs> follow the town center street network plan there's probably more grading more tree loss if you work with this particular design proverbia as it's called there's probably um, lesser grading and hopefully more tree preservation steve you're leaning forward so uh, oh the Deborah, <clears throat> if I I lost my train of thought. Um, so which which alternative, whether it's neighborhood edge or whether it's our transition designation that we came up with, gives us greater um, retaining of trees. Um, the neighborhood edge transition district would substantially change the level of development on the 50-acre tract. A rough estimate on the part of the department is if this was neighborhood ed transition district versus the three categories currently, um, we're looking at maybe 34 lots on the 50 acres. whoever it was, I think it was Dan, um, that the summary about changing the whole thing to neighborhood edge transition, um, I know it, given what uh, was just said about 34 lots, it, it changes a whole lot about it. But I thought the summary earlier spoke to at least some professed desire to eliminate the workplace, um, to be more consistent on the west side of 109. I won't repeat what was said before, but uh, there is something to be said for that, I think. And um, that, that's all I have to say. 
And then Dan. Microphone. Lindsay Marion brought this up in, I think it was September. And that was the terrain of the land where you're suggesting that there be some retail um, businesses there. And I think that's something that goes along with what uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Roten talked about, the creek and the tree line that would be helpful to stay there. If we're going to put, if we're going to put um, businesses there, we're going to destroy that section of that road west of 109. When I say destroy, I mean we're going to, you know what it looks like now. Mm -hmm. um, a tree line, to me, sounds advantageous to keep that creek protected. <clears throat> as Michael said, and as, as Rod, or is it Dan? No, Dan, mentioned. Aesthetically, coming down 109 or north or south, it's a busy place, busy, and it's going to get busier. So I'd like the committee, to, uh, the team, to think about that as a component when we start talking about suggesting what to do next. Oh, I believe for all intents and purposes, as Mr. Lee mentioned, this is more of a neighborhood edge project than anything else, so I would offer 133. I want to hear the motion first. <laughs> I want to hear the motion. Sorry. Take the three land use designations for these properties that convert it all to neighborhood transition and let this property be developed for the guidelines that we all agreed to last meeting for neighborhood edge transition. Lot sizes, lot widths, lot depth, the whole bit. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, for the purposes of putting residential occupancies on this plat of land, those are really the only three options we would have in town center. Neighborhood general, neighborhood edge, or neighborhood transition that we recently had, that correct? That's correct, and Mr. Chair. Make sure that in, that essentially it exists in two of them now. So this is my <coughs> those are our only options if we wanted to have residents. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second the, the uh, motion. Discussion of the motion. Joe, is, it, is there an option to move this property out of town center? Certainly, that would be a component of the boundary map. And as a recommending body to the Planning and Zoning Commission, such could be made. Dr. Jones, before a call for a vote is requested, you may want to hear from the petitioner and the petitioner. Certainly. Yes. Any time if the, peti if the petitioners want to chime in, just raise your hand, come on up and do so. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Jones. Uh, Mike Doster again. Um, I, I want to comment on just a, a couple of uh, specifics before I uh, comment on the, on the motion. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have represented to uh, TCUT at a prior meeting, maybe more than one prior meeting, that 
uh, we're willing uh, to remove the commercial on 109. The problem is we can't do it and be in compliance with the regulating plan. The commercial exists there so that we are in compliance with the regulating plan. Mm. The guidelines that Joe's been talking about are a little more subjective. The regulating plan with respect to workplace is not subjective. So uh, we'd remove it if we could. Now, if you recommend that it, that it be changed from workplace to something else, residential, uh, it presents another problem. And that is, we don't know how long the process is going to take uh, for that change to occur. And after five years, we need to move forward. And if there was a way procedurally with the Planning Commission or Council uh, to make that commitment, and then if that change gets made ultimately by council, I believe that's where the change has to be made, and that's going to, not going to be a short process uh, if you recommend it. Uh, we want to move forward. Uh, we're willing to take it out, but we can't because of your current uh, uh, regulating plan. And uh, if, if we have to wait uh, until that is considered and maybe passed, that really doesn't work for us. Um, a lot of time has passed. We've worked very hard to come up with a compromise plan uh, that uh, we think is a great plan. I mean, nobody liked the Ackerley plan. There are a number of people who prefer this plan to Ackerley. Um, secondly, I'll comment on, on the uh, street plan uh, that the department uh, does not favor. I think the question and I, I really, really rather see you deal with the specifics before you go to the underlying zoning, and I'll say why in just a moment. So if, you, if you're looking at our street the way it is now in the reserve plan, uh, it is a street that does not invite cut through. In our opinion, and we've talked to our traffic consultant about this, that if you extend Main Street west through this development, it invites cut through. With the improvements along 109, our traffic consultant doesn't believe that the cut through is necessary to facilitate the move, movement of traffic in this general area. We feel that we need the street that we're showing, which is not a, a boulevard or Main Street, an extension of Main Street. We need this street to turn this development into a neighborhood, not a collection of smaller neighborhoods, such as we saw in, in the Ackerley plan. So this is really more of a neighborhood street and not a Main Street. So the question is, do you extend Main Street west of 109? We don't think you need to. Uh, and if you did, it adversely impacts the neighborhood in our opinion. And Tom may have more to say about that because he was much more involved with the, uh, the specifics of uh, developing this design. I think that's uh, all I want to say on some specifics, but with respect to the motion, at this stage, after five years, to recommend a complete and frankly drastic change in the zoning category for this property is just not right. It's not fair. It will destroy this plan and make the development of this tract uh, unfeasible, in my opinion. We started out with 189 lots, and through all the meetings and compromises that we've made, we're down to 133. And that's all I have to say. So we are opposed to the motion. Is there anything you would like to add, Mr. Cummings? And then both of you questions from the team. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Um, so I was taking notes feverishly as the discussion was going on back and forth. Mike and I were young men when we started this project. Um, <laughs> Frank, uh, Frank Gregory and David Fowler, um, the owners of the property, owner representatives for the property, are here in attendance too to watch the proceedings. They've been intricately involved in the discussions among our team and with the, and with the city vis-a-vis -vis our team um, to try to come from where we were to where we are today. One of the things, Dr. Jones, that I, I, find, I found myself asking was some of the questions that I heard from the dais, which was something having to do with what are we looking for from the team? And 
I'll combine a few comments that um, that Mr. Vunich offered with some of my own uh, sort of editorial. I think what we where we really got to, and Mr. Lee, correct me if you think I'm I'm stepping off the path, or Mr. Cohn. Um, I think where we got to with P and Z really was um, the acknowledgement, tacit, although it may have been that that the plan does in fact have merits. Um, Joe spoke to a few of them earlier. The real crux of the question, I think, for for our team was, does the city require strict adherence to what it calls guidelines as opposed to the code? Strict adherence to the town center guidelines. They're not architectural per se. I heard a couple of other people say architectural guidelines. What we're really talking about is the neighborhood design guidelines that were part of what created town center in the, in the city's original charter. And we got to the, this point where after f- four years or so, the discussion had really come to a, a head. It had come to the question, okay, if the Ackerley plan is disfavored, if smaller lot lots, lot lines, excuse me, lots themselves are disfavored, can we, pr- can we provide an alternative plan that could be supported by the city? The answer we got in, in, the, in the department's report was essentially, and I don't want to, I want to put words in Joe's mouth, but paraphrasing his report was the city can't support this strictly because it doesn't strictly adhere to the guidelines. And Joe, am I misstating an overly general statement? My job is easy sometimes, and if the recipe isn't met, then it's not the recipe we want. And frankly, we didn't pretend that it was met. Um, what we heard from the citizenry and what we heard from the commission at the, at the, at the top of the mountain, as it were, um, on the Ackerley plan was no. Decidedly, no. We don't like it for this, this, and this reason. We came back with almost, one, one could argue, the anti-Ackerley plan. Okay? <laughs> we, we, we stood it on its head, turned it around, and said, okay, how can we reimagine this thing? Um, I, I won't belabor it um, for, the, for the sake of this is not a PNZ hearing per se, but the things that, that are really important about this land plan methodology, which is the difference between this and other developments you might see in town center, even Payne, um, Payne Family Homes is Main Street Crossing, are, are the following. <clears throat> Trails. Trails intersect throughout the entire project. They're um, the city's uh, multi-use trail configuration, which is roughly twice or almost twice the size of a sidewalk. Um, there are asphalt trails that connect all of the active public spaces in the, in the um, community, and they're 100% discretionary on our part. We added them because, as a Wild Woodian myself, um, one thing we always hear from the citizens is we love our trails, right? So that was one of the things we included in, as, a, as a foundational element to this particular land plan. The second was the open space. And if it, it's not really detailed there, Joe, do you have a slide with the park on it? This particular park was the, again, the culmination of many different iterations between Payne Family Homes and the city. It provides what I believe will be, and Joe, again, correct me if I step off the path here, the largest privately maintained public space in the city. Um, it's very highly amenitized with things that people need in a neighborhood, gathering places, um, a shade structure, play areas, things of that nature. It really would be, I think, the heart of this community and something really special that would stand out against the competition, if it, as, as it were, in the, in the, in the surrounding area. Um, the lot sizes. Uh, we purposely and very deliberately mixed the lot sizes up. So they're not just this street's all 50-foot lots or this street's all 60-foot lots. Um, we did bunch some of the larger lots in the back because that's where we heard from the commission they wanted larger lots was backing to the west. Um, but as you, what that means is, and what, and what isn't necessarily apparent even from that diagram, is as you drive down the street, it'll have a, it would have a much more organic feel. Um, you, can, you can go through some production neighborhoods here in town and elsewhere in the St. Louis area where you go down the street and many of the houses look very similar because they're similar. They're the exact same width on the exact same width lot. That's not our neighborhood. We've purposely and deliberately changed that, put it on its head, and said, "Look, 
how do, how do neighborhoods in places closer into town that the neo-traditional or neo, neo-urbanism are trying to mimic, what do they look like? They don't look like that. They don't look like everyone has necessarily a 50-foot lot or a 10-foot you know, 10 side, side yard setback. Some of them are different, right? And so that's what we were going for here. So the differences between the lot sizes will lead to differences in the actual homes, meaning the width of the homes. The colors of the homes will be different. The materials of the homes will be different. The diversity will be unlike anything that has been seen in production, home building, and wildwood to date. And so it will have a much more organic feel to it. Um, the openness and attention to view sheds is another key element here that I can't stress enough. Joe, could you uh, go to the one that shows the homes on the lot, please? Thank you. Notice as you enter the subdivision from 109, a lot of times in, in, in traditional layouts, what you'll have is the houses face 90 degrees to the street, right? Not so in this, in this particular land planning methodology. Notice the front doors face the traffic as it's coming out. So you're not going to see, you're not going to emphasize, your eye won't be drawn towards a long, deep wall with, with windows or without, with siding okay, or brick or whatever it is on the side of the home. What, what you'll see are the typically more ornate front elevations of the home as the first element, so, such that as you're driving down 109 or you're driving down Old Manchester, you're going to see much more of the front of the homes than you would in a traditional subdivision. Um, I had the benefit of actually going to Mr. Harrison. Rick Harrison was the land planner who uh, worked with us on this. He came in from Minneapolis, and we did a... Um, uh, informational session for uh, planning and zoning uh, a few months, I guess it's been almost a year ago. Um, but the difference in, in his neighborhood, the really big difference that isn't even really palpable on that, but which I can demonstrate here to you guys spatially is this. In, in, a, in a development like Main Street Cross, so hopefully everybody in a traditional neighborhood like Main Street Cross, trying to communicate to the team is the answer to the question. Can we create a neighborhood that's beneficial to the city that lives well and still adhere to many of the guidelines, but not strictly to all of them? I'll argue that we argue, we're here to argue that we can for the specific reasons that I talked about just now. Um, there was a gentleman I, I went and saw at the National Builders Show a couple of years ago. His name's Michael Medic, and he's an architect. Uh, I believe he's in Virginia now. <coughs> and he told a story about density. And he said, density isn't really what people are concerned about. It's what density feels like that people are concerned about. And he told the story. He said, I, he, he, then quoting him, he said, I fly Southwest Airlines. And I like to get in the, the A boarding group. We all know why. So I go in and I pick my seat, and I like to sit on the aisle, he said. He's about six foot four. He said, so what I'm looking for is who's the next person coming down my aisle? Because they're inevitably going to pick the window seat, right? And he doesn't care if that's another six foot four guy or a guy like myself who might be a bit husky. Um, <laughs> he doesn't care who's sitting in the window because they're a good arm's length away. What he's really worried about is that third person. And if it's that's my 110 pound sister or a guy like me, okay, still three seats, or in this case, 2.67 houses per acre, but it feels different, right? 
that's the difference between a land plan like this that works and just blind adherence to guidelines. Guidelines certainly purposeful and there for a reason. But if you take the time to really understand the thought that has been put into this, the years of discussions with staff, um, we've really come up with a, a plan that would benefit the area. Um, just a few uh, summary comments that I took away from the discussion earlier. Traffic concerns, obviously those were studied early on. Um, we met with MoDOT at one point in time and we've had it studied on, on our end. The city's had it studied on their end. The intersections work and everybody will be safe. That's what we're concerned about. We build neighborhoods. We're, we're, not, we're not in the you know, build it and run business. We're, we're, we're the second largest builder in St. Louis for a reason. Um, the commercial outlet, as Mike said, you tell us. Do we leave it there? Do we not? Um, there's, there's some on the accounting team that want to leave it in there. <laughs> if we take it out, we probably add a lot or two. Um, but the, the entrance to the subdivision would be definitely softer. Um, and, we're, and we're hearing a lot of what you're saying in terms of the commercial presence there. Um, the, the last thing I'll say is on the Main Street transition. Um, there's been a lot of talk about density, obviously, as I talked about. There's also been a lot of talk about transition. <clears throat> what are we transitioning from? What are we transitioning to? And how is it accomplished, right? So in Main Street Crossing, you've got a town center guideline compliant subdivision with a large boulevard road that's unfronted, in large part because the only thing, um, I guess, lining it on, for much of its length are commercial outlots and not residences themselves. But even in the residence, residential portion on the east, there are no, no lots fronting uh, Main Street. It's a divided street. That makes sense. When we looked at this subdivision as, again, the anti accurately plan, if you will, we said we've really got a line of demarcation in Highway 109. And many of, the, many of the folks in our city feel it's a line of demarcation anyway, right? East of 109 one way, west of 109 another. I know it's not a, in the code anywhere, but I've heard, it's, I've heard it stated. Um, as an urban hunter, I know the regulations are drawn on that line. So it's not, it is in the code somewhere. Um, so what we thought was, look, just because we intersect with Main Street here, couldn't we calm the streetscape? bring it down, increase the front lots for the, for the residences, and give the green to the people, as opposed to making a 100-foot-wide boulevard. And that seemed much more in, in, in tune with a softer development that stays out of the creeks, that preserves resources where we're able, and gets away from a lot of the other things in, in design that have, be, have been proven to be unpopular over the years, like big, huge tub detention basins and things like that. We are really trying to hit as many of the buttons as we can in terms of preservation, in terms of design, in terms of the livability of this neighborhood. And we really would like the chance to go to P&Z with, with a recommendation from this team, if possible, to at least give it a shot. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Questions from any members of the team for either representative of Payne Family Homes? Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Doctor. Further discussion of the motion? Dan. One last input. We talked about a lot of talk about call it urban sprawl, call it whatever you want. A lot of discussion early on, that everybody- a the microphone, lot, it's on. A lot of people didn't want to see the sprawl go past 109. Okay, we're going across 109. Then we said, okay, we don't want the sprawl to go past Pond Road. I mean, this team has the opportunity to draw a line and make a statement and, okay, we approve this one, Tomorrow we approve the next one, tomorrow we approve the next one, and the next day we approve the next one, and then we're on the Jeff County line. I mean, how far are we gonna go? So, I say we have the opportunity to make a statement, I say we stand up for what we think our constituents want, and we make a decision based on that. 
Thank you. Vince and just a question, Joe, for clarification. If we were to recommend this be neighborhood edge transition, that would be contiguous with the property that we recommended last <coughs> meeting be neighborhood edge transition, correct? There wouldn't be a spot in between where there's something else. That's correct, sir. So everything west of 109 to Pond Road essentially would be neighborhood edge transition. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Steve? I think she's before me again. Oh. <laughs> so, Deborah. I have two questions. So if we go with um, <coughs> what's on the table, if we add a PRD to it, how many lots does that give us? Still approximately 34. 34. And I, I know we're in motion, so I don't know procedurally if we can do this or not. But I, I kind of like to hear <clears throat> what the team thinks about um, moving this all the way out of town center. Get some input on that. Can we do that, Terry? Would you just say that again? Well, I, I, the, she, I'll say it again, Deborah. Yeah, I'd like to get some input on what the team thinks about moving this property out of town center. If I hear some discussion on that, can we procedurally do that? That strikes me as a different motion. Okay. Uh, and so I think can be which can be introduced after we deal with this one. Steve. Yeah. I make a couple of comments, and I'll try to answer your question as part of my comments. Um, Look, I didn't know about all this kind of stuff when I uh, was invited to be on the commission. Um, but this has come up from the beginning because it had been referred to us early. And, and I think we agreed we we're going to push it back a bit. Um, I've, I have had the impression as I've heard comments about it, because this isn't the first night the gentlemen have talked about it, um, that it was a pretty well thought out second version. And I'm struck that way tonight also. But as hard as they've worked on it to get it to this place, what I'm hearing is that planning and zoning still couldn't bring themselves to approve it which is why they've asked for another point of view, that the Department of Planning can't bring itself to approve it. And then as it comes to us, and this is part of my answer to what you just uh, mentioned, I thought we were to start out by taking a big picture look at uh, town center and all the things that we've discussed along the way. It so happens that in taking the big picture look, we've been asked to um, give our thoughts on individual examples of properties too. But I want to go back to the big picture look because what I heard happening over the last six months, we started making jokes. I've forgotten the name we applied to neighborhood edge transition before it was that neighborhood edge something, but that, that within the group, there began to be a sense that it would make some sense to have a transition as you move from what I would call the core of town center into the more rural parts of the city. Um, I liked the question that the chair asked about does this abut um, neighborhood edge transition and that's part of my answer to your question I think in the big picture that we eventually got to which was yes it's worth recommending a transition uh, category that in general we're looking at it west of 109 um, and that's why the fact that it abuts the other to me is a positive. So I, I guess I'm, I don't know what the group will think about the motion overall, but I think the sense of it for me is right. Uh, there is an unfairness to it if, 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 from one point of view, but I don't hear support for the current uh, proposal anyway. 
So I, I do support our looking at the big picture and what do we think makes sense big picture wise. And I think we've been moving toward that with the neighborhood edge transition. Joe, do you want to make a comment? Are you just stretching? <laughs> no, sir. I'll defer my comments to a later date. Okay. Any other comments, Ray? I, I guess I'll just make uh, one other brief comment. Um, since I seconded the motion, and uh, you know, I came on this team, oh, I guess, close to a year ago now, essentially as a civilian. I hadn't worked with the city much, um, but what I had done was uh, listen to what a lot of my neighbors have to say and why they live in Wildwood as opposed to anywhere else. And I think uh, Deborah uh, said it best earlier that um, the folks that spoke to me, that speak to me as a trustee and spoke to me as they knew I was coming onto this committee, said, uh, we want um, less density rather than more. If we wanted more density, we'd live somewhere else. But that's why we live in Wildwood. And so um, I think uh, the folks who have presented this plan have done a great job. And frankly, I look at this subdivision or whatever you would characterize it as and I say it looks really attractive to me unfortunately it's in the wrong place and we've talked all around that several of us have talked about that um, but we're not looking for growth creep uh, we're looking to, to manage it and perhaps in some respects maybe even contain it a bit and um, and I think the motion uh, does that and so that's why I'm, I'm I'm supportive of this motion. Dr. Jones, again. Jim, Joe, I'm in. This 50-acre parcel of ground has been part of Town Center since the inception of the plan. This is not creep. This is not sprawl. This is part of the Town Center plan, has been for 20 years. If you vote for the Neighborhood Edge Transition District, don't do it because you think we're adding 50 acres to the town center. We're not. It's been part of town center since day one. Uh, right. And from my perspective, it's not uh, whether it's in the town center or out of the town center. That's a separate question. It's the fact that there are, I'm not sure how many, 130, 140 units that are here. And, and that's a little different than I'm envisioning this. And I think my neighbors would be envisioning it as well. Certainly. If it's a... If it's an issue of you don't like the density, that's separate from the fact that the property is not being added to town center or causing creep or sprawl or whatever the term might be. Historically, this was a site for a 450,000 square foot enclosed mall with nine outlots and an, and an apartment complex. Zoning was in place. It was the original location of Deerberg's before it moved to the east. It was approved by the city of Wildwood for a target. Now we're at 34 lots. Yes, Dan? I know it's all It's emotional and it's a big switch, but on the other hand, you know, this whole thing, and I agree with Stephen, is we've been talking about a transition. And and as Ray talks, it's an area that we want to transition into Wildwood Green Space. And every time we approve something like this, we chip away at that. And where are we going to stop? That's all. And Joe, I mean, I love you to death, but your argument that this thing is always been part of town center we just made changes to town center last meeting and we didn't have that argument come up then so i think we're all here to try to do what's best for the community and that's all we're trying to do thank you michael yes thank you um i guess what i would like to say is, is that the plan that you see on the wall is intended to be a transition more so than what the underlying town center criteria would provide. Uh, if we followed it strictly, we'd end up with another bright leaf development, which is, I don't think, where we want to go. 
so this is the transition the reason that it's back to this committee is that there's so many departures with this from what we have seen and reviewed in the past so this is the transition the stretch to go to our next transition is another jump so I want everybody to think in terms of that Joe's absolutely right this has always been in town center um, we could have it in, in you districts in town center but that wasn't the case when Wildwood was formed so the reason this is here is because there are elements in this design that don't comply enough to what our town center criteria was developed 20 years ago so like I said this is the transition that's all I have to say um, Joe I know you certainly know and I don't know if the other committee did, but I am the poster child for new urbanism the home that I live in is probably what 20 years ago was expected to be the walking community and the certainly small maintainable homes in the town center. I think what we've seen historically, what what I've been told is that every any time something has been proposed to come in, there's been requested to be some variation of that original plan that Mr. Duani kind of put on the table. Um, I've heard from a number of residents that, and you talk about brightly, that. A development such as this is not what they desire west of 109 and that plot of land. Although I think it is a transition from where I live, I don't know that it's enough of a transition. I think it will be paralleled with the Brightleaf development and the Main Street Crossing development that we've just put in more subdivisions, if you will. And then it lends itself to the discussion of I could have moved to neighborhoods east of here if, if that's what I desired. So I think that. The whole purpose of this was to examine, as Stephen mentioned, from the 10,000 foot view of, hey, what about town center is no longer valid or needs some tweaking? And I think history has shown us that the architectural component or the density component of the homes are something that I think was one of the mandates of this committee. So based on that, I, I think, although I agree with you, Michael, that this is a transition from my neighborhood <laughs> It's not enough of a transition for people that haven't had the, the luxury to delve into the minutia of the whole thing. If you would come to the mic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I wanted to thank Mr. Lee for his, for his comments um, regarding the transition and put some numbers to it. They've been mentioned, I think, in prior hearings, but I think it bears repeating. Main Street Crossing has a, a density of about 3.6, 3.7 units per acre. We're proposing an, on the reserve portion that it'd be around 2.6 or 2.7 units per acre. The, when the planning department came up with the neighborhood edge transition, and once again, Joe, correct me if I step off the path, but I think it provides for up to around 1.5 or 1.7 units per acre um, as, a, as a maximum density. Um, that is textbook planning transitionary zones. Um, and while I mentioned earlier that 109 is a psychological boundary for, for many of us who live in the city, there's west of 109 and then there's fronting 109. And I think those are two very, very different things. Um, someone out in Highway T has a different experience than somebody living w who would live in this subdivision. And I think we need to bear that in mind as well. This is really, this is a part of what was meant to be the activity center for the city when the master plan was drawn up. And to remove that and, and create a, 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 a less dense plan, um, while some folks uh, might be in, in support of that, I think it's, it goes against the whole idea of the town center and this connectivity that we all want in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Jenny? I'm, I'm just going to make a comment that I empathize where you guys are as developers, but this committee has sat and we've had very passionate discussions about what we believe the residents of Wildwood wants to see. Some of you may know I own a store here in Wildwood and I have tons of customers who live in Wildwood. They have conversations. 
and the conversation is they don't like the density, the amount of subdivisions that are going on within the area. It doesn't even have to be town center. It's that they're feeling, and you, who brought up about the airplane ride, it's their feeling that it's just getting too crowded. Um, and like I said, through months that we've set on these meetings, and again, having passionate discussions about our points of view and what we want for the city, um, one of the things that was and what came up was creating the neighborhood transition so that this city didn't feel like it's being weighted down with a lot of homes. So, I mean, that was just my comment. That's just an observation. It's certainly not to give you guys the opportunity. Again, I understand you're in business to be a developer. I think that when we all volunteered to be on this committee, it was to do the best that we thought is going to do the best for our citizens in the city. I'd like to call a question. Motion has been made to call the question. Roll call vote on call. call roll call vote on calling the question. Oh, that was good. Terry. Member Curtis. For calling the question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> On calling the question. You're voting to close the discussion and then get okay. Done. Okay. My apologies for not making that clear. We're voting to end the discussion. You you are voting to end the discussion, at which point then we will go immediately to a vote on the motion. Okay. So this is a vote to Continue to discuss or to end the discussion. A yes vote is to end the discussion, and no vote is to continue the discussion. I still the vote yes. <laughs> Member Brighton? Yes. Member Edward? Yes. Member Brewer? Yes. Member Broyles? Yes. Member Hood? Yes. Sharon Loyal? Yes. Member Cohen? Yes. Member Humphrey? Yes. Member Lee? Yes. Uh, yes. So now, will you repeat the motion before the team votes on it, Terry? Neighborhood <laughs> general and convert it to neighborhood edge transition. Any clarification of the motion yeah I don't know if the words have to be in there but this is a recommendation that would go back to the Planning Commission right we've been asked to comment you need to say that in the motion and would, let me ask you this would that go back prior to our total recommendation package do you believe Joe that is what we just did with latitude NAR 38 so it moved ahead That's the department's intent, unless told differently by the town center <clears throat> update team. The way it's worded makes it sound to me like we're making the decision, but we're not. We're, we would be sending it back to, plan, to planning and zoning with the recommendation that this track of land move to the neighborhood edge transition land use classification. Since it's Dan's motion, does he have to agree with that? I mean, it's team recommendation. Yes. In plain and simple. Is it okay to go yes. expedited versus waiting till we finish our body of work in February or whenever it gets done? I motion that we take a vote. Could you Any other clarification of the motion? Could you restate that, please? The motion is <coughs> that we, as a team, recommend that the three land use categories that this property sits on be converted to Neighborhood Edge Transition District, and it would follow the guidelines we established last meeting. Any That's other clarification of the motion? <coughs> so 
So now the vote will be on the motion. Will you take the roll, Terry? Curtis, uh, excuse me, Member Curtis. Yes. Member Roten. Yes. Member Edwards. Yes. Member Brewer. Yes. Member Broyles. Yes. Member Hood. Yes. Chair Loyal. Yes. Member Cohen. No. Member Helfrey. No. Member Lee. No. Council Lee's on McCutcheon. Yes. Motion passes eight to three. Okay. Yes. Let me draw the team's attention to the fact that we are approximately five minutes away from the scheduled 8.30 ending time for the meeting. Um, I would recommend that we are given opportunity. Does anybody, are, Joe, have any speakers signed up for the second session? We have one. Well, Mr. Chair and members of the team, the next item on the agenda was to allow any of the property owners within town center proper to speak regarding their particular <coughs> property. Certainly we could accommodate that as part of the second or last public comment session. It may take us beyond the 8.30 time frame. What's the team's pleasure? Yes, let them yes. speak. Okay. Before that, though, Ed has the floor. For yeah, I'd like to just make the observation that on the last vote, the three no votes were all from members of Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay, so we'll have the first. These this was part of the agenda. These speakers, right? Yes. There were two purposes with tonight's agenda. First, the reserve, which was just completed. The other was to hear from the property owners within Town Center regarding the regulating plan designation of their respective <coughs> lot or site. So I think we could maybe cover both the that item along with the final public comment session at the same time, and then we can conclude business. I would propose to the team that those who are part of the people who, property owners, on the regulating plan changes have no time limit on their remarks. If people were doing a public comment, and five minute time limit. So, so the first speaker. Sandra Christensen, please. And if you would identify whether you're a property owner or that under the item uh, six on the agenda or a general I am a speaker. property owner on Near Acres Drive. My name is Sandra Christensen, my husband Larry. I've been around here a long time. I just have to voice my opinion one more time. I've, I went to the very first meeting at Lafayette High School in, I don't know, 19 whatever it was. But anyway, we have been in the, in the town center area and have had all this happening all around us. And I'll tell you the truth, I'm tired of not knowing what's going on. Um, first of all, I don't know. I don't have the internet. I don't have a computer. I don't know what neighborhood edge is, our neighborhood general is. All I know is our back pasture backs up to city hall. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to wait until I'm gone, until we're both passed away, like over here, Raymond Brockert and Judy Jones, after they're gone, then their property is, is bought out by the city. I want to know what's going on. I didn't take a survey. There are seven of us on our drive. We're all ready to go. We are ready to go. I don't know about density. We purchased our property in 1962 because we had three acres, three and a half acres. That was our mini farm. Okay, that's that's going. Okay, um, I don't know. We're due for a new roof and a new furnace. I don't know if I should invest in that or if something's going to happen. Um, I don't know who the... Are you the town center update team? I don't know. There's so many different... So many different... Um, groups that I, I don't know who to keep up with. 
Anyway, we are in the walking community. You don't laugh at me. I'm telling you, this is serious. I'm 80 years old, and I'm tired of it. I really am. So I wish you would let us know what's in our future, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker. Dale Lindhorst, please. Hi, Dale Lindhorst, 1407 Bald Eagle Road. I live in Old State Farm Subdivision. I'm a trustee there for about 25 years. <clears throat> I also have been around since uh, <clears throat> just before this uh, city was incorporated. I remember the discussions about <clears throat> why we were incorporating, and we were sort of feeling our way. You know, they, come, they came up with the town center, and it made, made a lot of sense. You want to have a town center, you have walkability, that kind of thing. <clears throat> The fact that Route 109 was envisioned as the center of town center was obviously an error. Deerbergs obviously thought it was an error, and they didn't put their, their store there. Town center is now uh, around Taylor Road. Everybody knows that, and 109 is not the middle of town center. So town center should be moved, and the west of, west of 109 should be removed from town center, as Dan, I believe, recommends. And we ought, we ought to focus on what really town center really is. <clears throat> I'm fine with it east of 109, despite the fact that these, these fine people are going to be in town center. They just want to know what the hell is going on. Pardon my French. <clears throat> so, um, and quite frankly, against many homeowners' uh, wishes over the years, variances have been granted to allow more density. So once in a while, you've got to make a variance to um, allow for the town center to be squeezed a little bit. I don't care if it's only 1.8% of Wildwood. It could be 1.72% as far as I'm concerned. This, should, this tract of land should be... Low density, 34 lots are plenty. You can leave the creek in place. You don't need commercial development on 109. Who, was, who wants to put a commercial development on 109 south of Phillips 66? Nobody. So I think a recommendation, despite what the PNZ thinks and people that are on, on planning and zoning, if you, if you remove it from town center, I don't think you can have an issue with regard to the density of this man proposed. Thank you, sir. The next speaker. James Schmidt, please. I go by Jim, <coughs> and I'm not a speaker, but I'm Jim Schmidt. I live over at Netherton Road. My wife was born and raised in the, no. the poppy year on. <laughs> Grandpa got 90 acres for a wedding present to keep him out of World War I. My wife's lived here 75 years. You guys are ruining lives. Do you know that? Do you understand? There's lives in that triangular thing. I respect this man, but I differ with him that you're, you're affecting lives of my people. I've been, I, this Thanksgiving, in 64, I dug a basement to put my house I didn't have a single tree on my lot. I got 11 trees now. And you guys want to, oh, we need to do this, do that. I can't sell the property. I got my in-law's property. When it originally was Larry's Tavern, the Haney's Tavern, Cotton's Tavern, <coughs> and then right next door, Dad sold it off for a dry goods, and then it became Grover Inn, now Terry's, and she's out of business. The house next to it, that's mom and dad's house. The brick house was grandpa's house. Mom's house, we're sitting there for two years now, for 15 years. Nobody wants to buy it. Just a side note, Dr. Prang's my eye doctor. He was going to build a beautiful place right across from mom's house. But because of the restrictions, town center wants to build a house. He said, I couldn't recuperate my cost in 20 years. Come on, people. We're human beings out here. We need 
you to respect us and take care of us so we can move on. I'm going to be 75 years old this Friday. And then, you know, I don't need this in my old age. Thank you. Next speaker. Tony Bosworth, please. Gentleman passes. Dr. Jones, before we close, I would ask that you ask if there's anyone else that would like to speak before, we're con before we conclude. Any other speakers? Would you come forward to the microphone, ma'am? My name is Marilyn <coughs> Gouster. I live on Mary Acres Drive. Um, and I would feel amiss if I didn't speak because my neighbors have. Jeannie Hood's business is in my backyard. Great neighbor. Thank you. But we're unsure, as you've heard us say, the seven lot owners, as to what's to happen to us. We're neighborhood edge. Most of us have been there a long time. I built my home in 1980. And I thought back then, like Chesterfield wasn't here, there wasn't anything here. The firehouse was Jeannie Hood's spot. So it's been a long time coming. A lot of things have happened in our neighborhood. Personally, I thought the town center went from the pie wedge at Schnucks out to um, the Glencoe Highway T, that whole little section from um, Manchester Road to Highway 100. And as far as the development, where is Pond School in that excess access leaving? I was trying to figure that out. I think I, my neighbors and I are thinking, we've lived here a long time. We put an investment in our homes. We put an investment in Wildwood. I don't know what Neighborhood Edge actually means for us if we wanted to sell. I think that we were hoping that we could do the best for ourselves as well as for the community. So I just want you to know, like my neighbor said, we've been here a long time. Please consider us as the people and not just as a property. Thank you. Thank you. Jeannie? Sorry. I volunteer to be on this committee because I do have great concern for the residents of the city. I think as we set up here and we're making decisions, we really are trying to make decisions that's the best for the residents. I don't think we're trying to shaft anyone or make your life difficult. We can only make decisions based on the information that's given to us to help the city. So I see the frustration, I hear the anger, but it's not because we're doing a bad job. We're volunteering to do this so that we can make this city better for everyone. And I'm sad about the fact it's sort of like my business. I open that store because that's going to be my retirement. But what if someone doesn't want to buy it? So I think not only as a business owner, as a resident, I think that's something we have to look forward in the future anyway. What's it going to be? But I just want you not to be angry at us because we really are trying to do the best job we can for this city and for the people who live here. Thank you. Joe, I seek your guidance on the other items on the agenda. I'm, should I assume they will be moved over to the December meeting? Yes, the one item that is identified as discussion of regulating plan changes was parenthetical under time permitting. Obviously, we've exceeded our time. I would just add that our next meeting date is December 10th. Thank you. Thank you. And closing remarks from Chair Vince. You know, the only thing I would say is thank you to the residents for participating in the process. We genuinely appreciate that and appreciate your input into the committee. Thank you for your heartfelt discussions and consideration and recommend we adjourn. Motion's been made to adjourn. All in favor, aye.